Okay, hi there and uh, welcome to the first of two videos looking at the economics of currency volatility. Now, currency markets or foreign exchange markets are highly volatile at this time of great economic uncertainty. So in this first video of two, we will look at some of the factors that can make a currency volatile. And then in the second video, which follows straight on, we'll look at and evaluate three options for limiting the extent to which currency values fluctuate from day to day. A couple of headlines for you where the pound has been very volatile recently. Uh, here's a headline from yesterday. The pound plummets against the US dollar to hit a 30, 35 year low as coronavirus outbreak hits the UK economy. Here's a, a picture of the pound against the US dollar. It was falling beyond that. Uh, uh, huge, I mean, volatile anyway from day to day anyway, but look at that tremendous, uh, significant depreciation of the pound against the US dollar. Uh, in Mexico, uh, the peso has been depreciating quickly. Its value has weakened, hitting 24 to the US dollar. The currency has now fallen about 30% compared to its best level this year. And again, this chart uh, from XE shows the value of the Mexican peso against the dollar. Look what's happened since the middle of February uh, 2020. In fact, the peso was pretty much uh, appreciating a little bit against the dollar. It, was, it had risen from 20 peso to the dollar to about 18 uh, over the autumn months into 2020. But since then, uh, one peso, sorry, one dollar can now buy over 24 peso compared to 18. Otherwise, the peso has fallen, depreciated by more than 30%. How much further can it move? So we have here two examples of currency volatility. Looking at the markets as a whole, uh, I'm sure you're following this time of great economic volatility, uncertainty and flux. So why is currency volatility so high at the moment? Well, in part, it's because of something called capital flight. Times of great uncertainty, investors tend to flee towards safer assets. So they may well be um, trying to liquidize uh, assets of countries where there are deep economic, perhaps political fears and shifting their money, for example, out of sterling and out of the Mexican peso towards US dollars or perhaps Japanese yen or perhaps even uh, the euro or the Swiss franc. Capital flight involves a flight towards safer assets. Linked to that, there's been a big rush, in fact, globally to borrow US dollars as a hedge if you like, an insurance against the risk of a deep global recession. Another key factor at the moment, of course, is what's happening in the world oil markets. There's been a dramatic fall in the price of crude oil. Oil now trading at less than $30 a barrel. And that has an impact on the currencies, both of oil exporters, for example, uh, Mexico and Saudi Arabia, uh, and also those major oil importers, for example, India, countries that are net importers of oil. We're also seeing... I'm sure you're following this significant movement in monetary policy. Monetary policymakers scrambling to respond to the enveloping crisis, uh, changing policy interest rates, ramping up the scale of their quantitative easing. The Bank of England, as I speak, just an hour or two ago, had cut interest rates to the lowest level in the bank's history, 0.1%, and increased the scale of QE by £200 billion. There's probably more to come. These are huge unprecedented changes in, uh, in in central bank policy, particularly the scale of QE. And to an extent, price volatility could also be caused, although there are circuit breakers in, in things like equities markets, there are lots of currency traders who use automated trading algorithms. And to, the, to an extent, that can cause price movements in currencies to amplify, for example, because speculative selling kicks in at certain points. So hopefully this explains a little bit about why there's a lot of currency volatility in the markets. As I said, uh, 19th of March, about uh, 2 p.m., the UK Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of England at a special meeting voted to cut bank rate. Bank rate is the main policy interest rate to just 0.1% and increase the holdings of UK government and corporate bonds by £200 billion. Now, normally, a cut in interest rates uh, would cause the UK sterling exchange rate to depreciate. Um, can you explain why? 
Uh, and also, can you build an argument for saying that sterling might not necessarily fall if UK interest rates fall? Take a moment to press pause on the video, perhaps even write down uh, on, on a notepad or in your main notes. Think of two reasons why a cut in interest rates could cause sterling to fall, but equally why a cut in interest rates might cause sterling actually paradoxically, perhaps slightly counterintuitively, to move in an alternative direction. So press the pause button, have a go and uh, see what you can come up with. I'll come through the answers with you uh, in a second or two. Well, here's the obvious, if you like, the, the conventional thinking. Uh, if the central bank cuts interest rates, then investors, they expect a lower return, particularly if they've got money held on deposit in UK banks. Well, if they expect less returns, that could cause an outflow of hot money from the banking system. Some of that money will flow overseas and therefore that's an increased supply of currency in the foreign exchange markets and other things being the same that could lead to a depreciation of sterling however it's not necessarily the case a fall in interest rates doesn't necessarily automatically uh, cause a currency to fall here's another scenario for you central bank cuts interest rates as before this is then seen by market participants as necessary uh, I feel like an inevitable, a necessary, perhaps insufficient, but a necessary move to avoid a depression. Uh, cheaper loans, a fall in the cost of mortgages, help support households, of course, assuming that commercial banks and lenders pass on those rate cuts to, to mortgage holders. If households are better supported, there's less risk to a catastrophic fall in demand and jobs. Therefore, there's less risk to corporate profits and GDP, particularly if, if and when we come out of the crisis. And therefore, investor sentiment could improve when the central bank cuts interest rates, seen as a proactive move by the central bank, and that could actually cause the exchange rate to go up. Hopefully, you can see here two, two different explanations of the same uh, interest rate and QE change. Don't forget the Keteris Paribus assumption. So I've taken you here through a chain of reasoning, but of course there are many factors, many factors besides policy interest rates that could influence changes in the value of a currency. Here's the pound. Here's the pound against the US dollar uh, on the 19th of March 2020. The pound was obviously volatile um, the previous evening. The currencies, of course, are traded 24-7 as a world market in foreign exchange. Uh, the market never sleeps. Um, and then the pound actually rising uh, against the US dollar in the aftermath of the, the cut in interest rates, suggesting that the second explanation perhaps outweighed the theory in the textbooks. Okay, that's the, uh, that's the end of session one. In the second session, we'll look at a, a couple of examples of what causes currencies to move and be volatile. And then we'll look at three reasons, or three options, sorry, for limiting the extent to which currency values fluctuate from day to day. So my second video follows on straight away from my first. Thank you.